All right, what is up, everybody? Shadow Scout 0013 here, report again for another unit breakdown, this time on Clone Captain Rex. And just kind of, you know, going to go over him today with the different possibilities that he has, kind of go over his strengths and weaknesses, go over his command cards, and some objectives that could be possibly really good, and some ideas with his command cards. So if you haven't already, go ahead and head to theburnacademy.com, sign up for 15 bucks a month to get, you know, three month workout plans that are all either for building muscle, losing weight, you've got 30 programs for at home, you've got abs and core, all these different exercises, programs, videos, tracking, everything you need to help you succeed in the gym. And then if you, if you want to, you can come on over here to the Discord channel and kind of check out all the different stuff that people post, help people out with the different you know, ideas that they have. I know Emperor Atlantis does a lot. NASA has done a lot. And, you know, just having everybody in here kind of submitting lists and doing things in general is a lot of fun. And um, yeah, and if anyone's ever down, you know, to do TTS, just let us know. It'd be really fun. All right, so let's go ahead and get back into here. So Clone Captain Rex, let's just kind of take a quick look at him. So he's got Gunslinger, which is really, really nice because after you perform a ranged attack, you can perform an additional ranged attack against a different unit with the same gun. So you can basically shoot three red dice at range two at two different units as long as they are both in range two of you. He's going to have Scout 1 automatically, so he's going to be able to go ahead and do a speed one move after deployment, which does not trigger Tactical 1 anymore because I think they nerfed that in the beginning. And then Scouting Party 2. So after you use Scout, you can choose up to two friendly troopers. It doesn't say clone. It doesn't specify clone. It just says troopers. So if, you know, you did have Obi-Wan Kenobi or Padme or Anakin, you can scout with them with Clone Commander X. As long as that range one to two of him. And then they can perform a move with a speed equal to your scout. So if you give him Recon Intel to give him Scout 2, then they're all going to be able to perform a scout two move as well as long as they're at range one to two of you i mean in general i'd probably get them as close as you can together because of the different command cards and because of the different things that they can do he's got sharpshooter one so you know he's already going to be able to take away light cover or at least cover one and then tactical one so anytime he makes a move he's going to be able to gain an aim he does surge to crit which is really really nice He's rolling red defense dice, but no surging to defense. He's got five health and two courage, which is okay. But, and if our clone Captain Rex, you know, it makes sense. I like it. He's very, he can be squishy sometimes. It just depends because he's going to be getting up close. He's only got five health. And yeah, he doesn't have impervious. So he's susceptible to pierce. And, you know, there's a few other things, you know, that make him very vulnerable but there's ways that we around this that we can do to get him a little bit stronger and i liked there's one that i did with obi-wan kenobi where it just kind of is guardian guardianing everything and then gardening gardening wow guarding guarding everything wow i cannot talk so besides the three red dice that he is going to be shooting at range one to two he's got two red dice in melee which is really really nice he's got a command you know, slot, a training slot, two gear slots, and a grenade, which I don't know why you need the grenade yet, but, you know, maybe if they do a grenade that shoots out multiple dice, that would be perfect for him. Or, you know, if he was really close to anywhere that needed ion, you know, you could take it really cheap EMP popper with him. Okay, so let's take a look at the different command cards that, you know, not command cards, sorry, upgrade slots that you can use on him so aggressive tactics is really really nice because with his command cards he's usually dealing out you know either one to himself if not i mean obviously with this one bit but he's got we're not program we're not programmed wow what the heck is wrong with me and it gives out to four clone troopers and then his two pip also gives out to two clone troopers which is really nice so he's at least giving it out to a lot of people and then if you were to combine it with you know push or ambush or attack of the clones again giving out all of those surge tokens is really really nice so that is one really really good upgrade commanding presence i honestly don't think is going to be needed at all because for the most part clones kind of play together and that's really really nice because they're sharing tokens so they kind of want to be close and captain 
Rex really takes advantage of that. You know, I'll kind of explain why in his command cards. Esteemed leader, um, I think that, you know, clone troopers are a little bit too expensive to just use them for a guardian, but you're more than welcome to. Improvised orders wouldn't be the worst, but I would just put that on a generic commander, not him. Inspiring presence, he's only got courage too, so you don't need that. Lead by example, he's going to have a command card, his three pip, that gives him inspire two already. Unless you need that during the remainder of anything, then sure, you can put it on there. There's other ways around it, just in case. Strict orders to get off of suppression with anyone that has a face-up order token, which is nice because if we add the clone commander, just the regular generic guy, and we have fives in there, we're going to be able to just give out orders to some people along top of the command cards. So it might you know, come in handy really well. Underworld connections is possible, but not necessarily needed. And then vigilance is also really, really good. So I think the top two is aggressive tactics and vigilance. So you can kind of go with whichever one you want. I'm just going to go with aggressive tactics for now because I think that those surges, especially on the multiple, you know, units that will have face-up order tokens will be great. Then all of the training slots, there's a few that really stick out. Up close and personal kind of sticks out because he's got range one to two and gunslinger. So he's going to be able to make basically two attacks and get two dodges in some instances when he's using Gunslinger. Sometimes you might not be able to see more than two and you only get that one. So it just kind of depends, but you're not going to be, you know, you don't have nimble, you can't cancel crits. So situational awareness might be really nice because of the token sharing. And then you might be able to share dodges and then, you know, Captain Rex might be able to really take that in advantage. And with maybe against with Obi-Wan, he, he, it might be good, but since Obi-Wan will also have Guardian and Force Barrier, because and that's in the list build, I'll show you, then I didn't think the situational awareness was needed. But in some instances, maybe it's really good. Tenacity, you don't really need, but it would give him three red dice in melee, but you're trying not to get him in melee because he's probably going to die before that. CZ initiative wouldn't be the worst, but with if you have a normal clone commander, generic guy, and then you have fives, you're possibly going to be able to give Rex in order. So you might not need CZ initiative if you're playing it right, but it could be a good one. You don't need protector on there. Overwatch, <clears throat> it will expand his gunslinging capabilities to range three. As long as nothing else can happen to him, like like force moved or he has to move or he gets shot at from further away, <clears throat> it's kind of a gamble, but you're welcome to put it on there. The offensive push is really, really good. Into the fray, probably not. Hunter, it, possible, but not necessarily needed. Endurance, not necessarily needed and duck and cover don't you might as well stay away from that so for now i mean what you could do is offensive push just to kind of make sure he's getting that aim and then jetpack rockets it's only five points on Cap captain rex and it gives him jump two so it allows him to get at high ground which is kind of what he wants as well to give him that cover so i'd usually kind of give him that if i can <clears throat> and then this is where it also gets pretty tricky so recon on tilt would be really good to give him that scout two which then would give everyone else a scout two instead of just scout one. Prepared supplies would not be that bad because having an extra dodge whenever you need could be coming in handy really nicely, especially since he's getting at range one to two of people to shoot. So he's going to be getting pretty close. I wouldn't waste an action and use portable scanner on there at all. Don't put that on somebody else. Grappling hooks, it sure, but you're spending an action to do something, he's going to have a card that allows him to recover. So ascension cables would be way, way better. You know, electro binoculars, you don't want to waste an action, you know, trying to give an aim. You want to just go ahead and take that aim. That's why the offensive push is there. Emergency stims could be good because, again, he's only got five health. And then giving him that extra little two health when in time of need could be really good. And final mini gear could be okay as well, but it's a possibility. So I always usually choose between prepared supplies and recon intel. So if anything, I just go with recon intel. Now, most of that being said is if let's look at his command cards. So call me captain. So clone captain Rex gains fire support, which is really, really nice. And when he uses fire support, he doesn't have to flip his order token face down. So he can use fire support as many times as possible. So this is another reason why you'd probably want to keep everybody in a very close ball is because if, you know, they're getting close, if, if Clone Captain Rex is can see anything at range one to two, 
and you know you're getting close people are coming in on you you lay this down you're going to give it to clone captain rex hopefully you have another generic commander who can give out an order to maybe five so you can then give out an order to rex well not rex sorry to maybe anyone else around so that you can also use him as fire support quickly unless you needed him it's a tricky tricky card and then when a friendly unit performs a melee attack clone captain rex can use fire support to add a ranged weapon to the attack pool this is probably where you're going to want to use it more so this is when you're going to want to use it in conjunction with either anakin being in melee or i even have it in obi-wan in melee because i'm using obi-wan to protect captain rex as much as possible with guardian guardian and with you know the force barrier and then when you know he's got to get into melee you can use calling captain to help obi-wan as much as possible but you know, that just kind of depends because now Obi-Wan doesn't have an order. Rex does. So you're really going to be hoping to draw Obi-Wan. So it may be very, very tricky. The Take That Clinkers card. So after a friendly clone trooper unit that has a face-up order token performs an aim action. So it has to perform an aim action. So it can't just move to get an aim and then use that aim to increase its action. So it has to be performs an aim action during its activation. So its first actions take an aim you can increase the maximum range of each of its ranged weapons by one to a maximum of four until the end of the activation. So using this in conjuncture with the arcs range two. So if you were to, you know, let's just say for the sake of the command card. So the command card is saying, you know, after a friendly clone trooper unit that has a phase up order token performs a name. So if you were to have a generic who gave an order to Fives, who then gave an order to Captain Rex. So now Five and Rex have an order. And then you give those two orders to two ARC troopers. Now you have four units that can take an aim and fire at an extra range. So your two ARC troopers can shoot their range two weapon at range three with when they take that aim. And then... Captain Rex will be able to do the same thing because he has a face-up order token. So he'll be able to do that and gain range one to three with his gunslinging capabilities. And then Five's unit will be able to do the same thing to a maximum of four. So you won't be able to use you know anything to get to range six or anything like that, or from four to range five. So yeah, you just that's why you know Rex and everyone else like the arcs with their range one to two would be really nice because with the arcs at range one to two, you're basically shooting, you know, a black and a white with four guys. So that's a lot of dice coming in. That's eight dice. And then if you have the heavy, you don't have to increase the range to that. That's already going to be range one to five. So at range one to three, they're going to be shooting 10 dice. Oh, that's, that's tough. And it's going to be four black, four white, two red. And that's a big dice pool and a really aggressive one. Even though they don't surge, you're still going to have an aim to be able to use. So that's really, really nice. And then that's with his two pip and then with his three pip. So we are not programmed or we're not programmed for clone troopers. So this is why Captain Rex does really, really well with mostly clones in the in your list because he just is a great clone supporter. Anyway, he's going to gain Inspire 2 and two surge tokens. And then with aggressive tactics, he's gonna gain a third one. And then when clone Captain Rex activates, he can recover. So he'll be able to recover his offensive push or maybe if you know you gave him something else that needed to recover, that's really it, honestly. He'd be able to, you know, and take off suppression when he recovers. So that's a lot of good stuff. I mean, even with Attack of the Clones, if you just had a random just generic clone list with captain rex this is another good one to use because when you're issuing an order using this card it either gains a surge token or removes its suppression so then you're giving it three clone troopers and then maybe you've used the generic to give out an order to fives who then gave out an order to rex and then your three clone troopers that you give it to are maybe some arcs and everyone else and you're just giving surges to as many people as possible making him really deadly again at gun lines, which he was really, really good at. I mean, Rexstar was a huge success back in the day. 
and I say back in the day as if it was so long ago, but yeah. And I think, you know, with some tweaking and with the new upgrades, I think it could be doing pretty well. So I'm going to go over just a few lists that I made for him, and then we'll kind of go over what I've done objective wise and stuff like that. And we can talk about it. So let's go over a Rex and Padme. So with the Rex and Padme, I did nine activations, 800 points. Now, if you need to change it, you can. I have no idea why Hunter was in there. Sorry. So it's 798. So aggressive tactics, offensive push, jetpack, and recon. You have the regular generic clone commander with offensive push to hopefully generate another aim for anyone and then take an aim if he needs to. Padme is definitely there to token share as much as possible. And then you have some phase ones with the DC-15 so they can keep shooting pretty far away. You've got you know, a phase two with fives to have a courage three and reliable one. You've got an arc trooper strike team just with a generic uh, DC-15 arc trooper. You've got a full unit of arc troopers and echo. So kind of what I was thinking is if you wanted to alpha strike in a way with his two pip, Rex's two pip, where he can increase the range of two units right here to buy one when they're shooting. So you've got the clone commander who's given it to fives and then fives coordinates to a clone trooper. It doesn't say core specifically, kind of like Gideon. It's just a regular clone trooper and Rex is a regular clone trooper. Boom, right there. So what you would do is give that order to fives who then gives the order to Captain Rex and then you use the two clone or the two orders to give it to the two troopers here. Or if you don't, you can at least give it to at least a Padme Amidala or something like that if you wanted to. And have her shoot from range one to two to one to three when she takes that aim. And she surges with three black dice. So that's another possibility to make sure you're getting four token or four orders out who can all do what they can to increase their range. You know, if you didn't want to give it to the strike team because the strike team is somewhere else, then that's, you know, why you'd give it one to the arc trooper and one to Padme. But you'd already have two others out. So that's one way to do a list. I have the ATRT just for any kind of, you know, anti-cannon or anti-armor stuff, I should say. Now, if you wanted to get rid of that and kind of instead do maybe another arc strike team, you've got nine activations. You still got, you know, 14 points left to do with what you want. So if you wanted to, you might be able to give Padme and or other people the prepared supplies. Maybe you give, you know, Echo's team prepared supplies to get him, you know, nice and comfy. And then maybe with this phase two, you give them offensive push. That way you can generate some more aims or another aim and another dodge. <clears throat> you know, you can give out recon intel probably to the arc troopers strike teams to give them scout three which would again really help with coming out with the objectives you don't have to you can honestly take those off that's still 799 and maybe you gave well padme is going to have scout two so she's going to already going to be able to get kind of close you still get her behind some sort of cover but she'll you know you start with the two pip to begin with at round one and then boom she's got a range one to three gun for that round and then as they come in she's using her range one to two now if you wanted you know you can give her her range one to three and then make it range one to four but maybe you know that's up to you that's that means you can't divulge her three pip but if you do divulge her three pip and give her you know the infiltrate she can just go a little bit ahead of captain rex or be anywhere still near captain rex and they can do their thing. But honestly, I think with this one, you're probably not divulging her three pip unless you just need that secret mission. But for the most part, kind of using that two pip with Captain Rex to kind of give everybody that extra firepower at range one to three with, you know, with Echo. Everyone, you have eight dice from the ARC troopers. Then you have two red from him, giving you an extra surge already. And then you're getting a surge from aggressive tactics. So that's two surges. It's critical one. You have lethal. So you'd be able to spend the aim you took instead of re-rolling to make it lethal since you're rolling a ton of dice. Hopefully you don't roll a ton of surges, but you have two surge tokens to do with what you want. So then you're gonna be able to get more hits through. 
and then crit, and then you can just make that aim lethal, and uh, you've got a nice, strong beginning attack, which I think is pretty awesome. So that's nine. You know, that's something you can do. Let's kind of look at command cards for them. I would go with Call Me Captain just in case because, you know, it's his. You can go with Padme's uh, Danger Sense. So basically, or her one pip, I should say. So basically, she'd gain Danger Sense too. So she'd be able to have, ton if she has a ton of suppression, she can use that to help re-roll those, not re-roll, to add extra dice to her defense dice pool. And then at the start of the activation phase, she can transfer any number of suppression tokens from trooper units at range one to two to herself. So that way, if she doesn't have any suppression and you do want to use this, you can take off suppression from other people and give it to her and then for each token transferred she also gains a dodge up to two so basically you're just taking off suppression one suppression off two people or two suppression off one person getting two dodges danger sense to making yourself pretty much kind of a little tank here in a way so that's possible you i took away the synchronized offensive vehicle basically to put another arc trooper in there you don't have to. You could take that away if you wanted and give yourself back the bark speeder to begin with. And then you give it to the bark speeder. You, from that one pip, give it to the bark speeder who can then coordinate to a clone trooper unit at range one to two. You could give it to maybe the clone commander who will then give an order to fives, who will then give an order to Rex. So there's lots of ways to have more order control if you do bring a vehicle. That's just up to you. I mean, sure, let's do that. That gives you a few more points to do with what you want to. Take that clankers is a definite. And then Padme and one trooper. So when Padme issues an order to a trooper unit, it might either perform speed one move or gain an aim, a dodge, or a surge, which isn't that bad. Again, you've got kind of good order control with the clone commander and phase and fives, I should say. And then maybe give it to Padme and Rex so that you're always giving it to the most important people needed. And they can gain dodges or do an extra speed one move to get into range a little bit better. So maybe you go with hers. And then we're not programmed is a definite because of the four orders giving out. You know, you're just giving basically every one of your people should be able to have an order except for Padme and maybe the bark. Because... If you're giving it out to four people, it doesn't specify you have to give it out to Rex first. So your clone commander would just go ahead and give an, one order to fives. He would give an order to maybe Rex. Okay. So now you're giving out the order to maybe the clone commander. You're giving it out to two of your phase ones. And then maybe you give it to your arcs. So that's six units that have... Orders, yeah. I mean, I think that's pretty awesome. And then if you wanted dip diplomatic cover to give her that reliable one to be able to basically use her exemplar to kind of share stuff because she's got exemplar. So any friendly unit at range one to two in a line of sight can spend her green tokens. That's up to you. I mean, if not, assault wouldn't be that bad or attack of the clones wouldn't be that bad because just three clone troopers and you've got a lot and that's specifically what Rex is good for and it's giving them another surge or removing suppression because you don't have anyone that's basically removing suppression at all. So yeah, that would probably be one of the better ones to take. And so let's look at objectives for this one. If we just kind of look at the objectives and I'll leave, I'll make sure to leave these lists down below as well. Breakthrough might not be that good because you only have one bark speeder, which isn't going to do the most. It's just kind of there to be a little B in the side. Again, you don't have to take it. Maybe, you know, you don't want synchronized defensive and you want something different. That's fine. It's kind of not, it's a random bark speeder that they're going to have to shoot at. But if you need something to just kind of take away some fire from Captain Rex and Padme, it can at least take away fire from them. They are rolling red defense dice. It doesn't surge to defense, but that's, they still have cover one so it, it's better than nothing in my opinion intercept the transmissions would be okay key positions would be fine because of the amount of scout you're getting you can probably take control of that middle objective pretty quick especially with that two pip going forward recover the supplies wouldn't be that bad because you also have infiltrate with you know padme if you did want to take 
her three pip instead of attack of the clones recover the supplies would be even better but you have arc troopers and you've got captain rex already bringing everyone in close enough to the supplies so that it's going to be harder for them to do it anyway sabotage could be good hostage exchange could be good because you have a few of the maybe your phase twos could have courage three at that point they're, they're going to gain a surge so they're going to be well protected at that whenever you're there so that wouldn't be the worst and i think sabotage would also be okay if you also you know bring padme's three pip i think that recover the supplies and sabotage would be easier because you also have that extra possibility of having secret mission but i'm going to go with hostage exchange and then deployment honestly advanced positions just going to get all of your people in super fast battle lines could be okay long march you don't have too too many i mean the only you've got range four guns here and you've got range five here so you've got some long range stuff that could do well the bark speeders range one to three but you're doing a compulsory move and then you can maybe do another move and then do something so the long march wouldn't be that bad and also if you were to infiltrate they're still here maybe some scouting so you're going to be able to get closer out or farther out than normal and it's just up to you and it wouldn't matter because all of your you know scouting is going to be doing well major offensive wouldn't be that bad and I wouldn't go with danger close. I'd probably go with battle lines, if anything. Kind of keep yourself still in a ball in a way. And then conditions, clear conditions for sure. Limited visibility, not so much because you do have some long range stuff. Minefield wouldn't be the worst. Rapid reinforcements you want to stay away from because you only have nine activations. Fortified, no, because you're trying to, I would stay away from that supply drop for sure. Minefield and you don't want more suppression. Limited visibility, honestly, is going to be one of the better ones, but fortified might be better in a way. You still don't want it, but it's better to take. So we'll go ahead and save that. And then let's look again. Add another one. Let's go with Rex 501st clones, 10 activation list. And there's another one that's only nine. But I have up close and personal on him on this one. Prepared supply so that he's just dodgy, dodgy, dodgy. Vigilance on the clone commander to hopefully keep those. Just a phase two with fives, phase two with the Z6. And then you have one full arc trooper team with Echo and jetpacks. You have three. Uh, well, you can't do the three, sorry. On, on the 501st, you'd have to take that away because you can't have, that'd be illegal. So we'll do probably another arc trooper and try to give him the regular. And you have nine activations. I mean, it's not the best, but you still can do what you can. It's just Captain Rex and a clone commander. Uh, I'm not going to leave that one. That wasn't kind of I was working on still, but. That's why I came up with the 2.0. That's right. All right, so Rex and Pikes, not a 501st, 10 activations, regular aggressive tactics. I have situational awareness on, the, on him this time. You can change that out again. You can put offensive push, keep the jetpacks, recon. You still have some DC 15s. You got fives and a phase one. You've got a full arc with Echo. You've got two strike teams, and then you've got a Pike syndicate and some pretty stacked Pike soldiers. You've got the pack pike capo with the disruptor to be able to get that extra independent surge because you won't have it. And then with the electro whip soldier, I wanted to keep someone in the back in a way, or if there's a heavy melee user, then at least your electro whip soldier is going to be able to kind of not shut them down, but slow them down for the immobilize and the suppressive. And then they're going to have the extra pike foot soldier and the frag grenades so that they can surge to crit. So at range one, you're rolling the two red, and then you've also got five extra guys with the frags if you have them all still. And then you get a free aim cache in here. So in case you do need it, you can use it. But 
you're rolling five, six, seven red dice, range one, surging to crit, which is really, really nice in case a forced user or someone does come in. But that's 10 activations, Rex and Pikes. And I'll leave that one down below. They're not really like crazily upgraded, just mostly the heavies. Your Pikes are kind of upgraded the most. And then if you needed to, you could take away aggressive tactics if you needed to, but you're not giving orders ever to the Pikes because Captain Rex's command cards are mostly for clones anyway. Unless you wanted to use the generic ones, the most like ambush, you're going to have to anyway. If you put allies of convenience on Rex, you'd be able to give out those orders to Pikes. Not Rex and Kenobi. This is nine activations, aggressive tactics, you know, offensive push, recon. This is to hopefully get Obi Wan at, at Scout 2 as well to bring him along with Rex. He's going to hopefully use force barrier, force reflexes, and offensive stance, defensive stance to generate as many dodges as possible. You know, he's going to be able to use Guardian 3. And with as many dodges as hopefully he's going to get, he can just cancel those, protecting Captain Rex as much as possible. He's going to have jump one, heal. Captain Rex will have jump two. Obi-Wan has charge already, so that's really, really nice. And then again, Captain Rex is one pip will be able to lend some fire support. You just won't be able to have Obi-Wan with an order, so you're going to try to really search for him as best you can. But yeah, that's just kind of up to you. And then two phase one clone troopers with the specialist to generate some aims and or dodges if possible, because what they do is they can gain an aim, a dodge, or surge. <clears throat> a phase one with fives for extra order control. And then a Z6 trooper guy, three strike teams, one with Echo, nine activations, trying to, again, keep as a ball if you can, and then use Obi-Wan to guardian everyone while Rex is doing his best to, you know, shoot. But at least he's being protected by Obi-Wan, and so you should hopefully be able to move in closer while you're all protected. And then I would definitely take, you know, the one pip, two pips and stuff. So honestly, if, if you wanted with this one to begin with, with knowledge and defense, with Obi-Wan gaining a dodge token for each friendly trooper unit at range one, Obi-Wan can use Guardian during a melee. Maybe you use this in round one because you've scouted Rex to scout two. You used Obi-Wan Kenobi to go with him and you used maybe fives to go with him. And then you already have the strike teams with their scout two ability as well so maybe they're kind of close and then your phase ones if you wanted to you could keep them kind of right behind obi-wan and then go with knowledge and defense obi-wan will gain a dodge token for each other friendly unit at range one and then he can use guardian at any point in time this is going to give him how many people at least one two and then if your arc troopers go with them three four five dodges on to obi-wan if you can keep them at range one somehow in like a little ball and then he's just going to use force barrier and his dodges to protect everybody and then they can again on the next turn use take that clankers because they're close already to just go ham with you know, a farther ranged attack, that's just up to you. I mean, you could go with air support if you wanted to. They probably wouldn't be expecting that. To kind of go with have that beam to you. General Kenobi, when Obi-Wan can issue when Obi-Wan Kenobi issues an order to a unit, that unit gains a surge for each other friendly unit at range one. Again, trying to keep everybody close in a ball so that they're already token sharing, you know, they're already doing what they can for Guardian and Force Barrier. And then he's just going to keep getting, everyone else is just going to keep getting surge tokens instead of aggressive tactics. You know, we want handing out those. And if, again, they're in a ball, they're going to be getting a lot more. And then we're not programmed is really good. Again, giving it out to four trooper, four clone trooper units, which you have multiple of. So I honestly think that Obi-Wan Kenobi could hopefully keep Rex alive long enough to do a lot of damage. But, you know, that's just people who want to use Obi-Wan Kenobi with Rex. 
And then the last one, the 501st 2.0. So this one's got two full strike or two full arc troopers. You have two strike teams. With these arc troopers, they've got scout three. Captain Rex is going to have scout two. So he can go ahead and bring up, you know, fives and the clone commander with him. So you're going to have those three, and then you're going to have four units that could have, well, I'm sorry. You're going to have Rex, clone commander, and the phase twos, scouting two. You'll have your arc troopers right here doing scout three. And then you, maybe you have those arc troopers somewhere else doing some scouting too. You've got your barks. And then go with the two-pip that I was talking about. Take that, clankers increase the distance of you know the arc troopers here and when they take that aim and then shoot those dice that's insane order control is really good because again you have the clone commander and you've got fives you've got two bark speeders that can kind of go do what they can on the side but all of your guys are maxed out i couldn't get another unit in here even without the jetpacks, without the recon, without the emergency transponder, without the clone medic, there is no way to get someone else. So for the most part, I just try to do some upgrading. And you're going to be doing really well with this one, with the 501st. There's a lot of good stuff you can use. So let's see here. I want to take that clinkers, definitely. You know, lead from the front would also be pretty good because of the amount of people that you have in a ball that are all cloned up together. If you can just base to base to base and make a big old ball, you'll probably be able to fit a ton of people in here. But uh, it's so hard because lead from the front can be good. Tactical planning could be really, really good as well with the special forces. After a friendly support or special forces unit performs an attack against the unit that has a face-up order token, shuffle that order token back into its order pool. So if you needed to give it to the bark speeders, you give it to the bark speeders. Then your clone commander here could direct the core trooper phase twos, who could coordinate in order to one of the arcs, maybe echoes. So then you at least have three units with face-up order tokens that have the ability to shuffle an order token back into the order pool. So that wouldn't be the worst. You know, lead from the front's pretty good because when you're building command hand, you got to treat it as though if it has two pips. After a friendly commander is issued an order by this card, you can choose three other friendly units within range one of the commander unit, and then each of them gain an aim or a dodge. So it has to be within range one. So you're you're looking at base to base ball almost to try to get those three units fully in there. Especially when you got five in the unit but at least you're giving them all an extra dodge so that's one way to do it you could go with the air support that wouldn't be that bad you do have you have the ability to go with synchronized offensive again calming captain could be good because of the fire support and at least giving captain rex the order you don't have to go with that one again this is such a tough one because take that clankers is could be very very important for your arc troopers or if you really wanted to take lead from the front and tactical planning, just get rid of take that clankers. I mean, this is kind of Rex's army. So in a way, I don't want to take out take that clankers. But it's just if you are looking, because I'm not, a, I'm not a, a clone player. It, I know that I don't like to play in a ball and I don't like to play close together. I like to spread out and I like to flank and I like to do what I can you know, not in a ball. And that's why I like the Empire because they're kind of more independent in a way. You know, you don't have huge synchronicities like droids and clones because with droids, keeping them to kind of at range one from each other, keeping them somewhat in a ball so that they can coordinate and, you know, get their orders done. You know, there's ways that you're trying to get past AI in them. And then with the clones, they're super expensive and you're trying to keep them together. But they do really well together because of the token sharing. Token sharing, So you just have to kind of keep them close, which kind of helps. Uh, the token sharing is very, very tough to get through sometimes. But again, I like the fact that I can just kind of do what I need to with the Empire units and 
don't have to worry about clumping up. So that's why I'm kind of torn between, you know, having lead from the front and tactical planning and air support. So if you like to ball your guys up, lead from the front would be really, really good. If you want to make sure that you're putting in those orders again, it's, it's a two pip. So it won't be the one pip. And especially in that time of need, at least you have the options of multi, you've got two fronts. You've got the bark speeders that you can give the orders to, or you can give them to maybe the strike teams or arcs, depending on maybe who gave out the orders and, you know, if they're giving them out on the side, maybe you go with whoever's on the side. It, there's lots of ways that tactical planning could come in handy a little bit better. So sorry for that long rant. So we're not programmed, I think would also be really good. Attack of the clones would be really good again because there's all clones. And then leaders of the 501st, because you don't have anyone with inspire or anything or ways to get rid of suppression, this wouldn't be that bad. It's also three special forces or core which I would obviously give out to the special forces. The clone commander is already going to give out your core, your only core, the order. So you're not having to search for it ever. And then you'd be able to give out at least three out of four special forces in order. It's just kind of up to you on that. I'd go with, we're not programmed for the fact that you're giving out four orders to clones, which could come really in handy for all of the ARC troopers. And then clone commander could give it to, could give out that order to five. So you can give out that order to Rex so that you have both, at least you have Rex having an order and all of your ARC troopers having an order with this one. So yeah, and it's the 501st. You might as well go with it. Again, objectives. I th honestly think that intercept the transmissions is always good. Key positions is always good. Recover the supplies is always good. And then either you only have one core unit so they're going to be the only ones in the middle and they've got fives. I probably wouldn't use hostage exchange at all. So I'd probably go with sabotage. And if not, maybe payload would also be good because again, they're staying in such a ball that, and they have jetpack rockets so they can get up and down. They're still at range one of it. So maybe instead of sabotage, you go with payload. You might be able to kind of go with bark speeders and bombing run because you have two bark speeders and then you, you have at least three other units with jetpacks who are more mobile so they could do really well i'd probably give it to maybe the generic arc trooper here but you have to give it to units that are in the deployment zone so it's kind of hard to do that with your clones because they're all trying to scout forward so that's probably why i wouldn't go with bombing run even though you do have the barks and then deployment because you do have barks you could possibly go with the rollout and then advanced positions, long march, and major offensive. Because you have scout and scout two and possibly scout three with these guys, if you leave on the recon intel, you're already getting it into the thick of things very nicely. Maybe if you wanted to get in with the scout and try to get out, limited visibility would be kind of a good choice because instead of trying to worry about shooting long range, you could use that cover to with your recon intels for the first two rounds no one's shooting past range one or sorry no one's shooting past range two in the first round no one's shooting past range three in the second round and then it goes to whatever so by that time hopefully at least with the scout three on these guys you will have gotten any of those objectives like recover the supplies maybe you've gotten into position for key positions intercept the transmissions or in some good you know you're in a good position. So limited visibility could be okay. And then clear, clear conditions, supply drop. And again, four to five positions, it's at least within range one to two of your deployment zone. So even though you're scouting at range two to three, you're gonna be able to at least fortify yourself at some of those positions. So four to five positions actually probably wouldn't be that bad. So those are just a few different lists for you guys trying to think of some stuff for you for rex and yeah he just does really 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 well with other clones he does okay with other melee users but for the most part he's always done well in gun lines i'd always keep him in gun lines and yeah all right guys so if you haven't already go ahead and head to the burnacademy.com go get you know ready for the gym with your three month workout 
workout programs. You've got my personal workouts, corrective exercises, video descriptions of every exercise, coaching videos, example meal plans. You can track everything. And again, most importantly, go ahead and head to the Discord and just kind of, you know, see what you can do. The reason I did Rex this time was because it was definitely asked for because I like Rex. I mean, Rex is cool. I love him in the Clone Wars and the Bad Batch and everything else. I think he's such a good character. But yeah. All right, guys, I will catch you in the next video. If you have any ideas, go ahead and sign up in the Discord and tell me either a list or maybe like something else you've got that you want me to go over. All right, guys, catch you later.